even without knowing the subject of this work, even without knowing exactly what you're looking at, you can see the pain in this work. This is the work of my friend, Hertz Nazaire, a 46-year-old Haitian man with sickle cell disease. Hertz is an intelligent and talented painter. His art hangs in offices of towering skyscrapers and esteemed universities and medical facilities all over the world. Multi-million dollar companies seek out his art to represent them at their next conference or convention. So what was it then that drove Hertz to be kicked out of a hospital in the dead of winter with no jacket, no car, and nowhere to go? What was it that led him to joblessness and homelessness and having to start over and over and over again? You see, part of the answer is in his genes. But most of the answer is us. It's me and it's you. It's society and the medical system and how we treat individuals of color with chronic disease. Because you see, when Hertz is healthy and productive, he's a world-class artist. But when he's sick and begging for relief from his pain, he's just another black man looking for his next hit of narcotics. And this is the reason I'm here today. I'm a pediatric hematologist at the Children's Hospital of Michigan, and I work with a dedicated group of individuals who take care of children with sickle cell disease. Now, I'm here today to tell you about what sickle cell disease is and why, despite there being 100,000 individuals with sickle cell disease in this country and 2,000 right here in this city, you're not even sure what sickle cell disease is. To understand what sickle cell disease is, though, we have to start with the biology. Our genome is a magnificent instruction manual that tells our body how to make life go on from how much hair to grow to what color your eyes should be. And buried deep inside of that instruction manual is a little blueprint for something called a red blood cell. And as a hematologist, I can tell you that that is by far the most important blueprint in our body because the product of that blueprint is a tiny little disk that can change size and shape and travel through a complex tree of blood vessels in your body and deliver oxygen to tissues. There are 30 trillion red blood cells in your body. That's 70% of your entire body. And these simple but elegantly efficient little cells make their way peacefully through your body and never cross your mind. But for patients like Hertz and other sickle cell patients, these cells are always on their minds. And that's simply because their cells come from a blueprint that has a tiny but cruel revision. An inherited revision that stems from humanity's desperate attempts to survive malaria. It's a revision that causes heartbreaking and horrifying consequences. You see, this is a revision that causes life-giving red blood cells to change from being smooth, deformable, beautiful little disks into sharp, sticky, dangerous, soul-crushing ones. And patients with sickle cell disease can have life turn on them very quickly. They can have 30 trillion little plump disks turn into 30 trillion daggers being pumped through their body, ripping through their organs, depriving their body of oxygen. Man, I have seen some terrible things in my clinical practice. I have seen every single complication of sickle cell disease. I've been with patients at their first visit, and I've been at their bedside for their last breath. But it's pain. It's pain that I see most of all. And it's a deep, vicious pain. It's a pain of your body being deprived of oxygen. And I see the missed days of school, and the missed days of work, and the missed birthdays, and the missed graduations, the missed anniversaries. I see the missed opportunities. Because you see, life is a 
like a Jenga tower built on blocks of family and education and career and love and hope. And sickle cell disease comes along and pokes out block after block after block, waiting for this tower to just topple over. And I see my families and their, and their, and their, their kids struggling frantically to keep this proverbial tower from toppling over. But there's only so much you can do in an environment with no support and a climate brutally discriminatory to patients with chronic pain and chronic disease. Often, the only chance I can give my patients at a better quality of life is with sizable narcotics. And that is the standard of care and their right. But in this country, we're battling an opioid epidemic so brutal that physicians are uneasy prescribing narcotics to these patients. And on top of that, we have a medical system that has laid hurdle after hurdle after hurdle for patients of color. So now, when we have sickle cell patients, the majority of whom are either African American or Hispanic, you can imagine what happens when they access the medical system looking for relief from their pain. They're met with scrutiny and disbelief and bias. And man, I have heard all the excuses about why my patient's pain is not real. His labs look normal. He looks comfortable. He's sleeping. He's on his phone. He's listening to music. But that's just the medical system telling me your patient's not the right color to be treated with respect or dignity. Hertz had a chance to turn his life around, get off of disability, and get a job. He got the job of his dreams. He worked for two weeks and was hit with a pain episode that paralyzed him. He was stuck in the hospital, tied to an IV morphine drip, clinging for his life. He was terminated from that new job, that new chance at life. And it took him so long to get back on disability that he was homeless. I talked to Hertz about it, and he said, Dr. Z, there's a lot of starting over in sickle cell disease. You, these memories, they stick with you. It's like you have PTSD. You've gone through life like you've been through a war. And I propose to you that it's the pain of a broken spirit that hurts tremendously more than the physical pain. It's the pain of not being believed at school and at work. It's the pain of not being believed in the hospital. It's the pain in the choice of deciding to stay at home and suffer rather than go to a local hospital and be treated like an addict. It's the pain of missed opportunities. That's what breaks you. Maybe the problem is that we don't know how to measure pain. As it stands, physicians like me will ask someone in the hospital, on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is your pain? And this, of course, is a terrible way to measure pain, which is not a vital sign. It's an experience. It's an experience that we all feel differently. So how do you, had, how do you add objectivity to that experience? This is a question that my colleagues and I at the Children's Hospital of Michigan are working hard to answer. Are there markers in our blood that change when we're in pain? Are there other metrics that we can measure? We have found that red blood cells are more sticky and more fragile during times of pain. We've also found that patients have a deterioration in their sleep quality before they even have pain. And this is something we're trying to track in real time using a simple Fitbit. And maybe these are the innovative new measures that we need to add some clarity to this otherwise misunderstood pain phenomenon. I asked Hertz one day, why, why did you start painting in the first place? And Hertz said to me, I paint with bright colors to lift me up. Not to change anything inside of me, but to keep the darkness from taking over me. And it's been a long and hard road from 1910 and the first description of sickle cell disease in this country to the multitude of therapeutics on the horizon today. And this community has suffered in darkness for too long. They stand on the brink of illumination. And it's only with the support and the empathy from people like you that they will feel brave enough and strong enough to step into the light. I want you to recognize the momentous position you're in today, one we haven't been in over 100 years. A group that has been invisible, silently suffering in your community, has been fighting sickle cell disease alone, without tools to fight and without a community like you to support them. 
And while the tools to fight sickle cell disease are growing rapidly from new drugs to new therapies like bone marrow transplant and gene therapy, man, this is a battle that goes way past treatment and cure. This is a battle for justice, equality, and respect. And it's a battle I'm proud to be fighting here in Detroit, and I hope you'll join me. Thank you.